Good day everyone. Tim from Timber Visions here. So it's time for another Wood Wednesday. That's what I'm going to call this series. Wood Wednesday when I showcase a certain type of wood that I utilize myself and that you may or may not be familiar with yourself. So this week we're going to do a fairly common species of wood for the firewood industry, and that is ash. So everyone knows the saying, ash is cash. And the main reason for that saying, I believe, is because the moisture content of ash is fairly low on a living tree, so it doesn't take very long to get that down to uh, moisture in which someone can use it to heat their home. But ash has a lot more uses than just for firewood. Myself, I've done a lot of milling of ash. Not so much with my uh, woodland mills because I didn't have any good ash logs for milling at that since I've gotten that. But before that, when I was doing a lot of chainsaw milling, I used ash quite a bit. And let me tell you, it is a beautiful wood, uh, specifically green ash, which we have a lot of in our area. It's a fairly common residential shade tree. And unfortunately with the emerald ash borer, uh, they're getting far and few in between nowadays. Um, I want to say that it was just in the last 12 months that it started coming into our area, the emerald ash borer. Um, but I know it's been widespread throughout uh, North America for a while now. Um, a lot of areas, they've pretty much been wiped out of ash trees, um, but it, it just showed up in, in our surrounding counties in the last 12 months. And the municipal, uh, the cities and stuff and counties have just been taking them down like crazy. So there's an ample supply of them um, most of the time right now. I used to have an ash tree outside of my house and we lost the top out of it during a derecho um, a couple years ago. So we had to cut it down at, at that time. But um, but yeah, they're, they're a good shade tree. Not the best shade tree, but they're a good shade tree. Um, but there are three main types of, of ash and uh, green ash, like I had mentioned before. And then there's black ash, which tends to be a little bit smaller species. And then there's white ash. So white ash and, and um, green ash are both larger trees. You know, they can get, get pretty good size. But uh, white ash, has the highest BTU output, then black ash and green ash is the lowest of the ash varieties that we're talking about here. So um, white ash is 25 million BTUs per cord and black ash is 22.6 and green ash, which is majority of what I deal with is 22.1. So so black and green are fairly close. I mean, they're all, when you look at the grand scheme of things, they're all pretty close, you know, mid to low 20,000s of millions of BTUs per, per cord. So it is a great firewood species though. And there's a few different reasons besides just the moisture content. It, it cuts fairly, easily when it's green right i think once it dries up it's a little bit tougher to cut and I, that's pretty common with most uh trees though um but it splits amazing if you have some uh straight grain ash that stuff just pops apart so easy you could probably get away without a splitter if you just had ash to deal with i mean it just Pops so easy. It's it's a great wood for splitting. 
And that's why I use it a lot with silver maple for my bundle wood because it's such a nice straight grain wood, especially the the middle of it, the heartwood. Um, you can just get, it almost looks like it's been milled down wood. You know, they're perfect, straight, easy to bundle pieces of wood for for bundling. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice wood, but I've uh, spent a lot of time working with it as well for when, when I mill it up, you know, making different decorative plaques and things like that. When I started my laser engraving side of my business, I used a lot of ash because it's got, the green ash has a, a nice deep uh, brown, tannish brown heartwood, and then a really light colored sapwood. So it's a really nice contrast, you know, similar to the contrast that you get in black walnut, you know, where it's really dark and then light on the sapwood, you know, dark heartwood, light sapwood. So yeah, it just makes it really um, some pretty wood to do live edge type stuff with because you get that nice contrast and, you know, you can engrave on just the heartwood section, but you still kind of are framed out with that sapwood. And a lot of times I would take a full uh, slab, two, two live edge slabs, and then I would just cut down the middle of it. So I would just have two pieces with heartwood on the bottom and then sapwood on the top. It, it looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, and it's a great, it's a great uh, wood for in the fire, but they they make furniture out of it. It's not something you want to use for outdoor furniture. The the wood doesn't hold up like um, like a cedar or um, a white oak or something like that. You know those those woods that are known or hemlock that are known for outdoor use. Um, but you could make definitely make like a a rocking chair or a table or something like that out of that wood. Or like I do a lot of signs, you know, signs or plaques or whatever. Um, it's it's really good for that. And it's, it's a fairly hard wood, um, you know, so it holds up well. And they make, um, you know, ax handles and things like that out of it. Baseball bats, you know. And it's a good wood to use for, um, if you want to bend the wood, because uh, if you steam it and then bend it, if you wanted to do like an arch or something like that, ash is a really good wood for that as well. But yeah, it's it's a really uh, good wood in my opinion. And um, it has a very distinct odor to me. It, it, I can always tell when ash is burning or if I'm cutting wood, I can smell the ash. You know, it's, some people might say it's an unpleasant smell, but I, I love the smell of it. I, I, um, I really do. I, I think it smells, smells really good, but I like the smell of walnut also. And some people say that's not a good smell. And I think pretty much everyone agrees that black cherry smells good. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to be nose blind not to think the black cherry smells good. Um, Anyway, so um, the bark, and I, I'll put some uh, pictures up here, but the bark between the species is a little bit different. Um, the size of the adult trees, uh, the black ash is going to be your smaller one, but, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. If you're out in the woods or whatever, you know, you can be able to tell uh, just a young tree from an older tree. You know, I, I don't know if you'll be able to do that, but the bark is fairly different. I think the the white ash and the green ash, the bark looks more similar than the black ash does. Um, so you got that. And then also the buds are different on them as well. But uh, they they have um, compound leaves, so they have uh, the a leaf stem comes off, and then there's 
leaves off of the main stem and leaf. So that's another way to tell. Um, there's different trees that have that, that compound leaf, but uh, ash is fairly distinct. So it comes off and then there's, they're off from e each other. Um, not, they don't alternate, they're directly, uh, you know, uh, directly across from each other. And that's another thing you can tell between the species is the leaf size. You know, if you had two of them near each other, you can kind of do that. Anyway, overall, I really like ash. It's a good tree uh, for firewood and doing some milling. I, I, I do enjoy milling it. Um, it it's harder to, to mill than like maple. Maple mills fairly easy. It cuts, cuts really nice and fast and um, doesn't, uh, doesn't wave a whole lot. You can guess, get some ash knots that'll make your blade kind of wander a little bit um, because it gets rather hard where, where there's some knots and stuff like that. But if you can get a nice straight grain uh, butt log, um, you can get some really nice wood out of that. I know I did a, did a couple of them this last spring of ash and and the wood's been drying. I'm looking forward to utilizing that for some things. But, but yeah, good wood for some wood projects and good wood for firewood. And I I have a hard time um, not using it for firewood because I really like it for my bundles. It's um, some good stuff, and and it dries quick. You know, or it's to the point where you can burn it quick. Um, similar to like silver, silver maple is it, it dries out pretty quick too. And, and when you're selling firewood, having a wood that dries quickly is, is important, you know, unless you have huge areas to store wood for several years, like you would for oak. Um, it, it's nice to have a wood that uh, will season quickly. Because I've split and um, stacked some ash, and within a few months, it's low enough to uh, to sell. So, and I've heard that you can cut an ash tree down, buck it up, split it, and then burn it right away. I've never done that, and I won't sell anything like that. I always check with moisture meter. I'm trying to remember. I think um, the highest moisture I've ever seen on ash right after it's been cut and split, I think is, is high twenties. That's the highest I've ever seen it. So I, I think it just, you know, has a lower moisture content overall, where I think, um, like an oak or something like that, you're going to be up in the 40 some percent. So, um, that's where it has an advantage, you know, you get it cut up and split up and it it dries pretty quickly just because of the grain pattern i think on ash but uh yeah it's a pretty good wood hopefully uh my my first video like this was fairly well received it, you know it wasn't the, my best video ever but i, I kind of want to make a you know a series of these different different woods just for information sake people out there I know there's a lot of people that are just getting into firewood or or milling and um, they just don't know all the ins and outs of, of the wood. And I've personally done a lot of research myself. It's not like I've dealt with this stuff for years and years. Um, it's just things that I've learned by trial and error and, and, and working with these different types of woods and uh, you know, making some firewood, and doing some milling and things like that. I'm not an expert, um, but I do have some knowledge on it and, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. <clears throat> it's, this is a very searchable type of video so people can, you know, if they're searching for, you know, ash tree or what's, what good is an ash tree for, uh, they can, you know, watch this video and kind of kind of get an idea of what the uses are and what it's good for and just a little information about it. So 
hopefully you did find this video useful. And if you did, consider uh, just giving me a like down here. I think it's, it's over here, I think. Give me a like, and if you uh, would like to, go ahead and subscribe. It's always nice to get subscribers. Like I said, I'll be doing a whole series on these. Um, you know, it's, it's like the third week of January of 2024. So um, through the colder months here, I'm going to do one a week I, I'm planning on doing. So. so this is the second one. I will put a little tag up here for the one I did on Silver Maple, if you're interested in that. And then here at the end, um, there'll be a video that pops up over here somewhere um, about another video that I've done. So thanks for watching. And until next time, be safe, brothers and sisters.